Okay, good morning guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, I had originally filmed this video about 6.30 this morning because I had a repair job come up and I needed to go and do the repair or pick up the equipment. And so I stopped in the parking lot on the way back home and then I got a phone call and I had to go uh, rescue my wife because she had locked her keys in her vehicle. So, we finally got all that done and now I'm back moving back home and going back to the house again. So I figured I better give this a try again. Uh, the first time I recorded, I don't know how much I got, but uh, all of a sudden the video just cut off. So I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna try it again and see what we get. So, and in that first part, I was talking about uh, mentioning some examples, using myself as an example, talking about understanding and what the what, what are the biggest things God is looking for in us. And that is understanding. Now he gives us understanding. He gives us faith. He, he gives us everything. But he's looking for those who have a desire for those things. One of the biggest uh, indicators of who a true believer is and who a true believer isn't is desire. Do they have a desire to serve the Lord? Do they have a desire for salvation? Do they have a desire to understand how this stuff works? I want to know. I want to know how salvation works. I want to understand how I'm saved and why I'm saved. I want to understand Bible prophecy. I want to understand God and where he's coming from and, and why, how his love works. I want to know these things and understand these things. Now, everybody around the world knows who Jesus Christ is. You say Jesus, they know. They have an understanding. They have an understanding. They have a know, knowledge of it. Everybody. You almost can't find a person on this earth right now. Just a handful <clears throat> that don't have never heard of Jesus and don't know who he is. Everybody, almost everybody, out of almost 8 billion people, I think it's, it is 8 billion, over 8 billion, 99% of the world knows who Jesus is. But is that all there is to it? No, absolutely not. And we're not, not going to cover any scripture in this because I'm driving. Yes, it's hands-free. My hands aren't holding the phone before anybody complains. Um, knowing about Jesus is one thing. See, if, if all it took was for you to know, well, because you, you, you can sit there and say, well, I believe. Okay. What do you believe? I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. Is that it? What else do you believe? You know, let's be more specific about what we're discussing here and what we're believing. Now, it's not for me to say, you know, that you're saved or not saved and, and to, to try to judge what you believe or anything like that. I'm trying to explain what the, has to happen in, inside. Because the Bible says we have to be born again. Well, the only way you're born again is when the understanding of the truth registers with you. Because how many people know and don't get saved? Simon. The magician, he believed and was baptized. The Bible says specifically he believed and was baptized, yet he wasn't saved. <clears throat> Why wasn't he saved? He didn't understand. Because he was like, hey, I'm going to give you some money. Because dude had a lot of money. Everybody was paying him to do all that sorcery. I'll pay you money. You give me this Holy Spirit. He didn't understand how it worked. He didn't understand that it was a free gift. He didn't understand about imputation. That that uh, salvation is imputed to us uh, righteousness is imputed to us all the things that are Jesus are imputed to us when we are born again when we believe because it's in Jesus Christ there are a lot of people on this earth that are that call themselves Christians but don't they think Christianity is going to church every Sunday maybe even maybe even Wednesday they think Christianity is yeah I know who that is but yet, we have people that spend 30 years in the pulpit and then go to seminary near the end of their life and suddenly realize at the end of seminary, I never was saved because I knew all these things. <clears throat> I preached the word, but I didn't understand. And in seminary, they finally came to the understanding. God's the one that gives us that, but there has to be a desire. I, I say that people after 30 years in the pulpit, when they, if they go to seminary, it's because they have a desire to know more. That's why they went. They may not have realized it. When the desire happens, God gives it to you. When the desire for truth comes, when you desire truth, I want truth. I don't want to just, you know, guess. I want to know. God shows you truth. He brings it to you. Now, most people, and some people won't admit this, but I can see it in their theology and the way they communicate. Most people believe what other people tell them. 
And that's, that's their doctrine. That's not faith. You can sit there and you can talk about how, well, but this, but this, but this, but then I got people beat me up all the time about the uh, Mystery Babylon. And I shared the stuff that I saw on Mystery Babylon. And oh, I'll tell you what, people were just, they were doing videos. They weren't, some of them weren't mentioning but my name, but they were quoting from my video. Talking about it's America, it's Rome, it's this, it's that. Okay, well, that's great. But you're getting your understanding from someone else. You're not reading the Bible and seeing what the Bible says. I did videos on this and showed, did a word study and showed that every single reference to Mystery Babylon are the exact same references used for uh, adulterous Israel and Judah. Never once in the Bible is America even, even hinted at. It's always Israel and Judah. Now you've got to understand, here's where understanding comes in, that God has a remnant. Not all of Israel is going to be saved. God has a remnant because they're of the synagogue of Satan. They have, they have the orcs of orthodoxy right now, the Kabad and all them, that are from Babylon. They're all descendants of the people who were came from Babylon and brought all that stuff with them. The Talmud didn't come from the Jews. The Talmud came from Babylon. Yet the Talmud is there next to the Torah is their core beliefs and their laws. They, they bounce everything off the Talmud. That's Babylonian text. Both versions of it. Because after the first <clears throat> after the first time they were in slavery to, in Babylon, they brought a Talmud back. And then when they went the second time, they brought another one back. So, and you can look all this stuff up. So it's understanding that helps you see what's going on and, and what the referencing is and what these things mean. And we can go to seminary, we can go study, and we can have, you know, dedicate half of our life to, to this and that and the other and, and, and trying to figure all these things out and come to a conclusion that everybody else came to. Or we can go and read the Bible for ourselves with a genuine desire in our heart to know the truth. And when we do, God leads us to that truth every single time. That's why I found what I found in the book of Ruth. It, it shocked me. Even the videos that I have you know, on private that are ready to, to make, be made public that I've uploaded and I filmed about that uh, the other day. There's, there's stuff in there that still stands out to me and it, it's striking that God was communicating through that book this whole time and we never saw it. Same thing with the book of Daniel. I'm now starting to find more people that are talking about Daniel 8 the same way I'm talking about it because they read it and they're like, wait a minute, that's not, that's not talking about back then. That's not talking about 2,500 years ago. It's talking about now. And there's so many other things in the Bible that talk about that. It all comes down to understanding. Now, one of the things God is looking for, one of the things he's focused on, is finding people who want understanding. People who want to know how they're saved. That's intimacy. Now, you tell me how to drive a car, and I know how to drive a car. But if I understand the inner workings of the vehicle, if I understand the dynamics of centrifugal force, if I understand internal combustion, if I understand hyd hydraulic or hydrostatic pressure in the trans automatic transmission, if I understand gear lash, I have an intimate understanding of that vehicle and how to operate that vehicle and what is the proper way to do it. This is what God is looking for. He's looking for people who want that intimate understanding. How do we get that? Reading the Word of God. You cannot get out of reading the Word of God and saying that you're a Christian. You can have a genuine belief, but you're going to be walking in almost total misunderstanding. And the Bible talks about how people genuinely believe but still did not have salvation. This should cause all of us to pause and stop and go, whoa, if the Bible says there were people back then, 2,000 years ago, that truly believed yet didn't get saved, I need to examine myself because I want to make sure, I want to know and understand that I'm saved. I did that. The Lord showed me. He's going to do that for every one of us, but he wants you to initiate. He wants you to ask. People talk about having a, an intimate relationship with God. Are you in his word every day? Not reading verses other people give you, doing your own studies initiating your own you know, joining together and fellowshipping with God <clears throat> this is what he wants this is what he's looking for this is what he's his desire is are those that desire him the reason why we were picked from all those years ago is because he picked people that would love him back anybody can say they believe but do they really believe does it mean something to them does the gospel holds substance to that person. If, 
anybody can rattle on. Satan himself can rattle off the gospel. It's not like it's something he can't say. He's not a vampire. Vampires can't go out in the sun. Vampires can't do this. If you tell a vampire, uh, go count that rock, bowl of rice, and they're in prison to you until they finish counting that rice every grain. It's ridiculous. Satan's not like that. He's not bound that way. Satan can sit there and recite the gospel. In fact, the highest population of demonic activity is in church. The rest of the world, they're already covered. They're already in Satan's grasp. It's the church that has the problem. And we see that happening today because we're the enemy of Satan. The world isn't. The world is his oyster. We're the crabs. So he's trying to shut us down. One of the ways he does that is to take away or to drive away our desire to understand and our desire to fellowship so that we do not worship God. He can't take your salvation away, but he can influence you to not worship. And when you don't worship, you fail to achieve that intimate understanding of God. Fight this. The way you fight it is constant worship. You need to be in prayer every chance you get. Don't miss an opportunity to pray, to give thanks, even if it's just a quick statement. We're in a spiritual battle, and this is one of the ways you fight the spiritual battle. If you're giving Satan what he wants by spending all your time on Facebook, spending all your time on Twitter, uh, getting hung up on YouTube videos, some of these YouTube videos are very good. I watch plenty of them because it leads me into other studies. It shows me things that I never saw before, and it leads me into a further study. It helps to substantiate some of the stuff that I've seen. But that's not where I build my doctrine from. I don't go onto John Ankerberg's channel and build my doctrine off what he says. I don't go off John Barnett's channel uh, and build my doctrine off what he says. I don't go on John MacArthur's channel and build my doctrine off what he says. I listen to their videos and then I go look at the scripture to see what it says. Oh, wow, that is there. Let's dig deeper. Because in a video, they can only do so much. I want to go dig deeper. I want to find more. Now, one of the... Probably the, it's probably the biggest problem is a people's desire to not follow the truth, to not run to the truth, to not look for or seek out the truth. And the, that, that's our fight. <clears throat> you have to fight this on your level. You have to make a concentrated effort to deny Satan his prize. His prize is to get you to walk away. You can't lose your salvation, and he can't take it from you, but he can certainly come in between you and the Holy Father. So what we're going to pray for now, we're not going to use scripture, we're going to pray for God to show us the light and to show us and to give us this desire for truth, this desire to understand these things, to understand the prophecies and how they apply to us and the rest of the world. Right now we have a massive deception of people that are uh, desperately trying to get others to believe everything in the book of Revelation happened in 70 AD. Wrong. Completely wrong. Wrong. Where's the kingdom? Where's the millennial, millennial, millennial reign? It didn't happen. They're wrong. There's too many details. Right now we, we have a larger number and growing of people who either deny the rapture, say it's mid-trib, or say it's post-trib, and all three of those are inaccurate. It is a pre-tribulation event. Period. Done. There's no more discussion on this. The greater volume of scripture proves this. It does not prove the other arguments. When I did that walk through the book of Revelations, with you know, pretending that we were going to get raptured post-trib, you can see none of that applied to us. And that there actually isn't a rapture at the end. They're taking scripture out of context because they're listening to other people. You have to make the effort. You have to go to the Bible and prove these things. Don't just believe what some good-looking guy or a pretty girl says. Don't believe somebody who has a nice voice and is charismatic and is very well-spoken and says just the right words that make you get all tingly and fired up inside, make you feel the Holy Spirit. Go prove it. God wants people who think for themselves. We've been given the, will to, the ability to have our own will and to choose. He wants us to think about this ourselves and to make the choice knowing what we're going to get into understanding what this is going to partake in. Your claim of Christianity may require your life. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? If you don't understand what that means or understand how that affects you, you might want to stop and look deeper into this because most of the people from past to now died for their faith. Most of them. There's a high chance since we're right at the cusp of the tribulation we could die for it too. 
I've gone, I've come to terms with this. I've settled this in my heart. I've gone to the Lord in prayer and, and I've come to the realization that this is a, a high probability. It may not happen, but I've settled it in my heart. I understand how this is going to play out. <clears throat> he gave us every scripture possible to explain it to us. That's probably the second dumbest thing you could do driving. Foggy as heck, no lights on. Anyway. I still, I still believe the great deception is going to be that people keep convincing others that the Bible isn't true, that it's not accurate, and people are falling for it because they won't fight. They don't know what truth is. They don't know what they believe in. You don't understand. You must understand. That's true faith. Anytime the, the, any of the apostles or disciples were asked a question, they knew exactly what the answer was because they understood. Anybody can memorize scripture. Anybody. There are guys throughout history who have memorized the entire Bible. I can tell you what page it was on in one particular book. Yet they had no salvation because they didn't understand. There was no faith there. That's something that has to be given to you from God. But you can choose to have that desire, to want it. I want to know the truth. And once you start down that road, there's no turning back. Some of those truths are terrifying. Some of that evidence is terrifying. There's a lot of conviction in those things. But if we are going to be teachers of the gospel, and I'm talking not a designated teacher, I'm talking anybody who does a video or stands up and shares these things and tries to teach the Bible, you've taken the role of teacher. Even if you've done it once, we are under the greater judgment because it is stricter for us because we took on this job. It behooves every one of us. I have to include myself in this. I've been doing it for two years. Every one of us must realize we're under the greater judgment and greater scrutiny because we chose this profession, because we chose to walk this path. It is behooves you to get it right. Now, if it's something you don't know, the Lord's going to have mercy on you. He's going to show you the truth and lead you into that. But it is in your best interest to go and find the truth so you don't teach someone the wrong thing. If you teach someone the wrong thing as it pertains to salvation, especially and you intentionally mislead people because you refuse to go look for the truth, you can be bringing some serious issues down on yourself. Don't do that. This is why I, I harp on it. It's always been my ministry's message. Read the Bible. Read it, read it, read it. That's the message when I ask God, God, what do you want me to tell him? Give me something. Read the Bible. Read. Tell him to read. Not, not enough of us are reading. And he tells us there's going to come a day when there'll be a famine in the land. Not for bread for the word of God because he's going to take his word away because people don't want it. People deny it. People say, no, no, I don't need to read the Bible. I'll just listen to this guy. I'll just watch these YouTube videos. And eh, wrong. No, that's not the right answer. But there's going to come a day when God's going to say, okay, your time's up. And it's all going to go. And then, then when you're going to go looking for it, wait a minute, didn't I have a Bible? It's gone. God took his word away. I'm not going to have it no more. People are going to spiritually starve to death. I dare say this is going to be the great multitude or a large majority of them. Because once the powers that be get their foothold in where they want, once they get their system fully operational, <clears throat> you won't have the freedom to read or preach anymore. We're almost there. How many churches have been shut down and threatened? Go look, check out John MacArthur's channel, Grace to You. They've had a battle with L.A. They're one of the only churches open. I think them and, and Jack Hibbs are the only two, maybe the only two churches open in California. And that's if Jack Hibbs is even open. So, clearly we can see the battle we're facing. Clearly, we know by the scriptures, it's satanic. Clearly, we know. God is looking for people who want to understand these things because he wants to show us the truth. He wants to show us what's coming. He wants us to be prepared. The Bible says he takes great delight in the death of his saints. Our death, when we die, especially for the name of Christ, it means something. It has weight. It's not just a random person being killed. It's not just, well, it's a martyr. He was martyred. It's, it's something very special to God. Because you died for something. But if you don't understand what you're dying for, your, your death is worthless. So this is something that I'm trying to impress upon people. We 
must understand more, we must learn more and know more. From that, even though there's more conviction, even though sometimes it's terrifying to, to learn these things and know these things, especially about ourselves, it brings great peace. It brings an incredible level of peace. And the world can't do anything to you, and Satan can't do anything to you. Because the Holy Spirit will grow so strongly in you that Satan can't touch you. I'm attacked every single morning. I wake up with the most horrible thoughts in my head. And it's like a minefield, and i got to fight my way out of it. But I don't have guilt because God took the guilt away. Christ forgave it. Because he, my thoughts are sin. He forgave them and took the guilt away. I know I'm in a battle. I understand how this works. And I'm moving forward. Most people, they're letting it... Ooh, wait, it's getting bad, folks. They're letting it. Uh, they're letting it get them down. They're letting it bring them down. They're letting what's happening in the world mess them up and hold them back. Don't do that. You are a child of God. All knowledge is, is accessible to you through Christ, but you have to go find it. Go ask for it. Go search them out. It is the honor of God to hide a matter. It is no wait. It is the pleasure of God to hide a matter, and the honor of kings to search it out. Are we not kings and priests? We're supposed to be searching for these things. Let's do that. It is getting yucky. It's like soup out here right now. Anyway, don't miss the opportunity he's presenting to you. I'm actually about to pull over and pray. I'm just looking for a good spot. He's He has everything waiting for you. <clears throat> he's waiting for you to come to him. He's right there. You've got to call out to him. Call out to him. Lord, show me these things so that I can better serve you. So that I serve you with knowledge and understanding. Do you think the people of old did the sacrifices and didn't understand what they meant? All the sacrifices in the Old Testament, people read that and they're like, oh, that's barbaric. What they don't understand is every one of those things, everything about the tabernacle, everything about the temple, all directly mirrored what Christ did for the church and what we're going to do. Remember the two pigeons? So I just saw a video, somebody talked about this too. The two pigeons, they would kill one, pour its blood in a little thing, and put the other live pigeon in there, put the thing on to shake it up, and then let the bloody pigeon go. That was a direct representation of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the blood washing away the sins, and the resurrection. That's the one going. That's us too. It's all contained in those ordinances. It's all contained in those sacrifices. They are a hint. They're a shadow. They're a mirror to proclaim the coming of Christ and what he was going to do. And he finished it 2,000 years ago. You've got people right now that are desperately trying to get convince you that you can't lose your you, you can lose your salvation <coughs> and um, you need to regain it every day. Christ died once for all sin. He did not die multiple times. And he's not going to die multiple times. He died once, that's it, period. End of story. All these people are heretics. They have a false doctrine, and we've got to call it out for what it is. Don't let them deceive you. Don't let them mess with you. Don't let them lead you into deception. Because those lies, I pulled over now and say, those lies lead to nowhere but Satan. Those lies don't lead to heaven. And those lies don't help you with understanding. Those lies satisfy the flesh, satisfy our pride, and our sense that we have to play a part in our salvation when we play no part in it. It is all from God through Jesus Christ. So understanding is the key. And we're going to pray this morning for understanding when we glorify God. Because if we don't understand, what good are we? If I don't understand how this works, if I don't understand what all this means and what it's meant to accomplish, what good am I to God? I'm not a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor? You know, you know why it's called a vessel of honor? Not only is it, does it look better, it has integrity. It can hold the wine. It can hold the fruit. It has strength. It's been tested. It's been tried. All that talk that Jesus did about trying in the fire. Gold tested in the fire. Tried seven times. That's the word of God. We're supposed to be that too. And the way you do that, study. Study, life, prayer. Let's pray now to our God. Now that I've talked long enough. Let's pray now. And I do these commentaries because these are my opportunities to share a lot of things and a lot of insights that I'm coming to. And it's my opportunity to try to instill something different. 
because it's helped me and I know it'll help you guys too and the people that take this to heart it does help them and I get emails and comments all the time of people going hey I took your advice and that was awesome it really did help a lot of those people have gone on and started their own channels that's awesome we need more people preaching the truth don't let Satan deceive you and whatever you do don't let him come between you and your father in heaven don't let him become between you and Jesus Christ because you're called to worship. One of the good works you do is worship. One of the fruits you bear is worship. And the Bible puts a great emphasis on this. Let's do that now. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to lift you up as our God, to sing praises onto your holy name, to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to give thanks to you for this wonderful day and this rain. We need it. We've had people that have been burning burn piles, and this rain's going to keep that fire under under control. We thank you for this day, and yet another day, <clears throat> to be a blessing to those around us, to reach out and to help where we can help. We give thanks for this day because this is another day for us to share the truth. It's another day for us to share the gospel. It's another day for us to reach out to you in fellowship, to read your word, to know more and learn more about you and to come to a greater understanding of what all this means and what you set out to do. That our salvation isn't just something that we put on as like a coat. Our salvation is something within us. It is something that changes us. And in order for us to have that, we must be born again, just like your word says. We thank you for your word. Without your word, we wouldn't know any of this. Without your word, we would have no direction to go. But the word of God, your word is encompassed in it that points us to true north that points us in the right direction and we can rely on that the world today is doing everything they can to keep us from you to separate us from you and so we don't worship you i say we deny the world its prize i say we turn to you in more worship and deny the world it's hard but you give us the strength to do these things. You give us the strength to accomplish these goals. Father, I pray you continue to do that. And all the more as we see the day approaching. We know that we're near the end of the age. We know that everything is culminating. You put a new president in our office. This guy is going to take us straight into the tribulation, it looks like. But regardless of what we think, we have a knowledge and an access to it that you've provided for us. Help us to understand your word. Help us to understand your prophecies. Help us to understand your love, your personality, what your desires are, and how we can serve you. Help us to understand what our part to play is in this, what our ministry is, what our skill is. Something that we have, and only we have, that we can use to glorify you. I pray you help us to glorify you in all things, and in any way possible, and in every aspect of our life. <coughs> Because as the world falls apart, as the world goes into darkness, as the great apostasy is fully underway, there are but a few shining lights in this world. I pray that that group of people grows. I pray people turn to you for guidance. Turn to you for truth. Turn to you for salvation. Come to our Lord Jesus Christ and beg forgiveness. Admit they are a sinner. Confess and receive redemption. We're looking for that day, that day when everything is redeemed, that day when the sons of God are revealed, that day when Jesus Christ is revealed, that day when the switch flips and everyone sees the culmination of all this prophecy. The mockers, the scoffers, all the people that have been denying, even Christians now who are starting to turn that way, that they will see the truth for what it is. They will see that all this is absolutely 100% accurate and that you keep your promises and the world changes. Open our eyes and give us understanding so that we can help them do the same thing. I can't even begin to confess everything that you've done in my life and it's been amazing. The last two years have completely changed everything. I walk differently, I look at things differently, I think differently. You changed me and I know you can change others. And I pray for them that you can change them because it is for your glory, Father. It is for your glory and the glory of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ whom we're watching for, whom we're waiting for, whom we're looking for, and whom we're praying for will come soon. 
This world doesn't want us. This world doesn't have, evidently doesn't need us like it thinks. So when it's your will and when the time is right and the appointed day comes, make it known to us. Make us to be ready and deliver us and bring us home. I know I don't desire this world. I know many people that don't desire this world. We're ready to come home. To come home and to stand in the presence of our Holy Father and to worship you in glory. What a day that's going to be. But until that time, Father, strengthen us. Give us stronger faith. Build us up in a most holy faith. Make us bold to preach the word to anyone. Make us stand up for what's right. Stand up for you. Stand up for your word. In a world when that's the one thing they don't want us to do. Because I don't want it to ever be said by anyone concerning me that I didn't warn people, that I didn't declare the truth, that I didn't share what you've given. I don't want to go to heaven with blood on my hands. So Father, please anoint us, strengthen us, cleanse us, prepare us, get us ready for what's coming so that we can be the greatest blessing and we can honor you in all these things. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I can't stress enough how you need to be in the Word of God. Take, if there's something that you're doing that is non-essential, cut that out of your life and start reading the Word. If you have a laptop, download eSword. It's free. The only thing you pay for is, is any other Bible apps. I paid for the New King James app and the uh, King James Plus so I can have Strong's. If you have, if it, if it's just your cell phone or a tablet, you can get my sword. That's in the App Store. Same thing. Take the time to read the Word and study it. Learn more. When you hear somebody give Scripture, go study that Scripture. If they give you a verse, read five verses above and five verses below. Because then you get context. And I've showed this on many, many videos. Because somebody can take a verse and read it completely out of context. You read it in context and it's like, that's not what that means. That means something totally different. Right now people are going out of their way to try to make you think everything in the Bible is allegorical. Everything in the Bible is Jewish idioms. Because they're trying to explain away the truth. Don't let them do that. That's heresy. That's heresy and it goes directly against the word of God and God's will. There's a lot of people doing that, calling themselves Christians. Don't let them do that. Don't do that. Stick with the truth. And the truth is in that word. And that's the only place you're going to find it. All right, I'm going to get driving because it's getting nastier and nastier out here. And i got to unload my equipment. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray you have a fabulous day. Every opportunity you can, any amount of time you can dedicate to the Lord, get into his word, read it, and pray. Because 